we talk a lot about self-hosting here on this channel and taking control of the services you use by doing it yourself rather than trusting these big tech companies who are spying on you and selling your data. But when it comes to self-hosting, security is more important than ever because it's all up to you. And you might be thinking, hey, don't talk, talk to me about security. I got key pairs. I'm taking care of everything. I got two factor. I'm, I'm set. I'm super secure. But you can never be secure against unrestricted physical access. If someone can get to your machine, you're in trouble. And that's why we have to talk about the elephant in the room. Or should I say, the elephant in your home. So imagine if there was a threat that came up every time you went to sleep, or went to the bathroom, or just went to make some pizza rolls. That's right. I'm talking about the people in your house. Now you might be talking about a romantic partner, or someone that you just share your housing with, or God forbid children. Teenagers, teenagers will sell you out to the Russians for an Xbox and a dime bag of weed. Are you? And what? Are you? What, Krista, I'm filming. It sounds like you're suggesting people kill their families. I'm suggesting people get serious about server security. Today, it's all about DTA, Krista. Don't trust anybody. We can't. We can't be condoning that on this channel. We'll be demonetized. Do you have a better solution? Yes, let's do something else. A better solution if you're worried about your hardware is probably to use something like YubiKey. A uh, YubiKey is basically just like a normal two-factor authentication, but instead of having a phone as the device that you have to have with you when you log in, it's just a little tiny hardware key. The idea being that once you have this set up, you have to have this key every time you go to log in, and it'll be a lot more secure than just relying on a single password. We're going to use the YubiKey to generate a one-time password that we're going to use to secure our SSH connection. And we're gonna be using a server provided by our good friends at Linode, who you guys have heard on this channel before. The great part about YubiKey as well is that every time it generates a password, that password is unique. So even if someone does manage to get hold of that particular password, the YubiKey is gonna know, oh, this was generated a while ago. This isn't legit anymore. The machine that we're gonna test this on first and get it all registered and uh, set up is going to be a Debian machine. But then from there, we're gonna take it onto our server on Linode. So we're doing this with Linux because this is kind of a nerdy channel, but if you're running another major operating system, this also works for that. It also works for mobile. So this can go across a whole spectrum of devices. Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is add this repository and run update. Yubico stable is the repository that we're gonna add. And you can see here that that uh, installed launchpad PPA for Yubico. That's what we're gonna use to configure our one-time password. And now we just need to install it. The YubiKey personalization GUI. I already had it installed. And now we can check it out. Now using the OTP application, we're gonna to go to the top left option there, the Yubico OTP, and do a quick setup. So what this is gonna do is it's going to write these values as the identity into one of the slots. Now this, YubiKey has two. Uh, slot one is a touch, slot two is a long press. So we're gonna go into slot two. You can have two identities uh, for convenience here. You click right configuration, you'll get the message at the top that says it's been successfully configured. Next, we're going to upload the configuration we just created to Yubico. But uh, basically it's gonna fill in all the values for you except for the one-time passcode. You click in that box, you use your YubiKey, either with a, a short touch or a long touch, depending on which configuration slot you used, to fill in that value, and then you click to upload. That's pretty basic. Next, we're gonna sign up for an API key, now that we have our uh, one-time passwords generating properly. So you just provide your email address here on the uh, Yubico website, and then you use your YubiKey to generate a one-time passcode, so it can associate that with your account. And click and you're good to go. It can take a while for this to go through. So if you set this up and it doesn't work immediately, you might have to wait a little bit longer. You should record these values for the next phase of the setup. We're gonna set up a quick Linode to test this on and to set this up in. So we'll do uh, something real simple. We'll just do uh, Ubuntu 
and we'll do the cheapest of all of Leela nodes. Because we're just testing. We'll do the Georgia region. And we'll do the nanode plan, shared CPU, because we're just testing. And it's cheap. We're gonna set up a root password to get in for the first time, and that is all we need. Give it a little time to boot, and we'll be ready to log in and start preparing it for YubiKey two factor. After logging into our Linode instance, we want to add a new user. We want to test this on root. So we're just going to add a user called Ryan, set him up. I can't type. I got the repeated password wrong. That's why they make you type it in twice folks. And we'll ignore all the contact details because this person isn't going to exist after a while. And there we are. We got our new user set up. So now we're going to install the Pam Yubico on our host. So this is the Linode that we created to test with. First, we'll add the repository. And then once that is added, update. And finally, libpam yubico is what we want here. 407 kilobytes, we can spare it. And there we go. Now we should have libpam on our host, which we are testing with the uh, authentication. So now we should be able to uh, attempt to set up our yubikey to authenticate two-factor here. So we want to make sure that the PAM file that was created there is where it needs to be. So we just want to look in lib security and there it is, pamubico.so. That's what we want. So now we can go forward with setting up our keys. Next up, we want to create a file where we're going to store the UBIDs with the usernames that are going to use them on the system. And that is going to be under its SSH authorized UB keys. So we'll go ahead and edit it. It doesn't exist yet. So we'll edit it and create it at the same time. And the format here is the username colon the ID from the UB key. Now you could have recorded this earlier. If you didn't, don't worry. It's the first 12 characters from the output when you press the button or hold the button, depending on which slot you put it in. So you put that in there and that is going to tie the user on this system with that UBID. Next up, we want to edit the ets pam.d sshd file. So we're going to add uh, some directives for pam about our ID key and to point it to that file that we just created that ties our users to the UBIDs. So I'm gonna search for PAM configuration. There it is. So you see right here, uh, PAM configuration for secure service services, the first line. We wanna put our line under that, directly under that. And here it is auth required pamubico.so that's the file that we confirmed the existence of earlier after installing the the pam service client id secret key and pointing it to the auth file that we just created that ties the ryan user to the ubid now client id and secret key are the values you got when you registered with yubico so i happen to record mine here we'll grab those and pop them in here. We should also note that uh, the required uh, command here, if this, the required means that it's going to force two factors, one of which has to be the YubiKey. If you change that to sufficient, then the YubiKey itself will be sufficient for login. So if you want to be, you know, like super cool, no password, just touch it to log in, you change that to sufficient. Next up, we're gonna edit 
sshd underscore config and we're going to set this up we are looking for these two lines challenge response authentication yes and use pam which is already on yes we want th both of those to be yes for two factor finally with all that completed Gonna restart SSHD so that all our changes will take effect. And now we are ready to test. So you move to another system with which you will SSH into your Linode. Now from another system, we wanna simply SSH to our test Linode server. It prompts for the YubiKey, I gotta go over to it. And it wants the password. There's our two factors. And we're in. So I think we can both agree that is a much more sane option instead of, you know, murdering your family. I mean, sanity is so subjective, but I will admit it's a pretty good solution. Although it does have some blind spots. Uh, pro tip, pro security tip. When you're showering or sleeping or things like that you don't want to just leave this thing lying around because then you're in the exact same situation what you want to do get yourself a uh, a watertight container a little bit of coconut oil right in the prison wallet every time who hurt you dta <laughs>